What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets with Rob. How's everybody doing? Probably not good right now with the news we heard about Bauer. But before I get into the Cubs and Mets rumors that it might be back on, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please press that like button. And if you enjoy my content, enjoy my videos, and want to see more to come, press that subscribe button, guys. I love your support, guys. I hit 200 subscribers. Video. All right, guys, so let's get into it. So now that the Mets lost out on Trevor Bauer to the Dodgers, what would the Mets do knowing that they didn't have to spend $40 million on Trevor Bauer? Well, the thing that could happen is the Mets could roll back, sit back, run back, and talk to the Cubs about a trade involving Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks. Now, again, there was a video that I did about a couple of weeks ago about Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks and the Mets rumors. Now, the reason why I think they're going to come back to this is because they can focus on the needs of this team. What is the needs of this team? We still need another starting pitcher. Third base is still an issue. Center field is still an issue, right? So where can they go from here? They can look at the Cubs with Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks. They can look at Jackie Bradley Jr. But the focus back in on Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks. Why is this a good idea for the Mets? Because they can take Chris Bryant off the Cubs' hand and that $19.5 million that he is still owed for 2021. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is, is that the Cubs will have to package another player of significance, which is, my, in this case, Kyle Hendricks, the significance of Kyle Hendricks and package him with Chris Bryant so that the, the Cubs can get prospects back and something for him, for the both of the players, because if they send Chris Bryant alone, they probably won't get back as much because he's on a one-year deal with the $19.5 million, and he's a free agent after that year. So they have to package another significant player with Chris Bryant. And Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks work. Obviously, it works for the Mets because it's a necessity. But the Cubs are looking to get rid of Chris Bryant, and the packaging Kyle Hendricks with Chris Bryant is an important factor to look at here. Now, I'm not going to go over a trade because the rumors will be picking back up. It's a guarantee. The Mets are looking for a pitcher. The Mets are looking for a third baseman. Don't believe everything Sandy Alderson says, guys. I keep on saying it in all my videos. Sandy Alderson said that he is okay with J.D. Davis being an opening day third baseman. Obviously, he's going to say that, guys. I can't stress that enough. Sandy Alderson, when it comes to the media... Always beats around the bush. Don't think for a second that he's not looking to upgrade third base. And in the meantime, he can upgrade third base and a pitcher spot in the rotation around the three or four type of pitcher in Kyle Hendricks. Now with Chris Bryant, we're going to go over his stats a little bit. I like to look at the last four years, gives a better scope of the player in the last couple of years. So Chris Bryant, the last four years in 2017, Played 151 games. He struck out 128 times. Had 29 home runs, 73 RBIs, and he batted 295. Good year. Not a great year, but a, definitely a good year. In 2018, we're going to go right today. He played 102 games. He was injured. He played. He had 13 home runs, 52 RBIs, and he batted 272. Again, he was hurt for about little less than quarter of a season, but he missed the games and it hurt his overall stats. In 2019, all-star year, only two years ago, guys, you got to focus in on that. Only two years ago, Chris Bryant was an all-star. He played 147 games, 634 plate appearances, 543 at-bats, 31 home runs, 77 RBIs, and he hit 282. Guys, this was only two years ago. I can't stress that enough. Chris Bryant is an all-star caliber player. He is only right now 28 years old, going to be 29. And we're going to go right into 2020. 2020, he played 34 games. He missed a few games because of an injury. But he hit four home runs, 11 RBIs, batted 206. Not good at all. But when we talk about 2020, and I talked about this with other players 
in other videos that do not look into 2020 as much as you would look into other years. You want to focus in on other years that even have good years, 2017, 2018 wasn't really that good, but you can still look at the fact that if you look into the other years and take away 2020, you can see that this guy is an all-star caliber player. Now, you can't take Trevor Bauer and his Cy Young award-winning year, and a lot of my fans did this, saying, oh, he's a Cy Young award-winning, he's going to get better. I said that. But if you if you say that about Bauer, you can't say you can't say that about Chris Bryant and say, well, he's got to be, you know, he's not, he's not getting better. Look at 2020. So if you're going to take Bauer 2020 and be like, look how good he is, and then look at Chris Bryant's 2020 and say, look how bad he is, you can't compare the two. You can't do that. You have to look before 2020. That's just my opinion, no matter how great the season was or how bad the season was. There's so many players last year. You can look at Peter Alonzo. You can look at a lot of players. You can look at Jeff McNeil for the majority of the year, except for the end of the end of the 60 game season when he started to pick up. There's players that are really good to great that had bad years in 2020. 2020 was a difficult year for everybody and including these players. It was a whole different ball game. A lot of these players just they just didn't show up. And it could have been because of COVID, the COVID season, 60 games. It's just they just didn't have it in them. That's okay. Now, you can't just throw it out there and say, look, Chris Bryant, he's just terrible. He's a good defense, really good defensive third baseman. He's an all-star caliber player at 29 years old, or he's going to be 29 years old. Now, the other player in the deal that we have to look into is Kyle Hendricks. Like I said, the Cubs will get more back for Chris Bryant if they package another player with Chris Bryant. And that guy, I believe, is Kyle Hendricks. It sets up well for the Mets. The Mets need a third baseman. The Mets need pitching. The Cubs need, they want to get something back for this, for, for this package. So they have to put these two guys together. Yes, they can they can you know look at all the teams and put instead of Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks, it might be Chris Bryant and Contreras, Chris Bryant and Baez. It really depends. But with Kyle Hendricks, is we're gonna focus on the Mets. With Kyle Hendricks, his ERA, his years has been really good. He's a solid pitcher, guys. We're gonna go back four years, like always what I like to do. 2017, he was seven and five, two point. I'm sorry, 3.03 ERA. Great, really good season. That's one of his best years besides 2016. He had a 2.13. In 2018, he had a 3.44 ERA. He pitched 199 innings. He he pitches, guys. That's another thing. He helps the bullpen by pitching a lot of innings. That's helpful. 2019, we're going to look at it. 11 and 10, 3.46 ERA, 177 innings. Again, he pitches. He's a workhorse, and he's a good pitcher. I don't mind putting him out there every fifth day and knowing that we can get a quality start from Kyle Hendricks. In 2020, 2.88 ERA, 81 innings, and he was 6 and 5. Now, again, I don't like to look at 2020 and says it's the end all, be all. It's just not something that I like to do. 2020 was a difficult year, like I've been saying. Kyle Hendricks is a solid pitcher. And now, why else would the Mets want to get that package of Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks in that deal? Well, look at his contract. In 2021, he's making $14 million. 2022, $14 million. 2023, $14 million. And his last year of his contract, 2024, $16 million. This is a doable salary for a middle of the road starting pitcher who is a solid Carrasco type of pitcher. And th that's what we need. We need solid guys. We have to back up Jacob the ground with solid pitches in this rotation. Yeah. It would have been great to have Bauer, but at the end of the day, we're still looking at Syndergaard coming back in May or June. So if you're going to have the you're going to have Carrasco, you're going to have Stroman, you're going to have Peterson. And if you throw Kyle Hendricks in that mix, that's a really good rotation. It is not one of the best rotations in baseball, but it's solid enough where you can use this offense to score some runs, use this rotation to stop the teams from scoring other runs, 
And this is the way you build a foundation. This is the way you build a winning team, guys. Kyle Hendricks and Chris Bryant. Now, I don't want to talk about trades yet because I want to hear a little bit more information if there's going to be a lot more um, rumors about the Mets and the Cubs about this trade. But again, you're going to have to give something to get something. And if you're going to package Kyle Hendricks with Chris Bryant, you're going to have to give a top prospect. I don't know if you're going to have to go to Ronnie Mauricio tight, but you got to remember the Cubs might lose out on Javi Baez when he goes to free agency. So they might be looking for a young, controllable shortstop. So maybe Ronnie Mauricio could be in that package. Now, if you give up Ronnie Mauricio, clearly J.D. Davis is in that deal. Could he just give J.D. Davis and Ronnie Mauricio for Chris Bryant and Kyle Hendricks? Yeah, you can say that. I'm not thrilled about that deal. But at the end of the day, you got to give something to get something. And to get Chris Bryant, even if it is for one year, at an all-star high level level like he had in 2019, you have a really good team. You have a World Series contender. With Lindor, with Chris Bryant, with Pete Alonso, with Michael Conforto, with Jeff McNeil. And then you throw in Trevor May that was a signing. James McCann that was a signing. There's a lot of things that can go well with this team if you make these type of decisions. And we need Sandy Alderson. Now, I love Sandy Alderson. Sometimes he gets me crazy, but Sandy Alderson has a habit of always going to plan B. We've seen this already. Now, with Bauer, is a different situation. They clearly wanted Bauer. When Sandy really wants somebody, he will go all in. But that's rare. He went all in for a pitcher who... Only last year had a great year. Every other year has been mediocre at, b- uh, before that. So Sandy Alderson went after all in, all in for a player, a pitcher that had one great season. And that was a, a shortened 60 game season. So Sandy Alderson and his plan B's always seems like that's what he's always getting or trying for. And Bauer, out of all the players that you could have thought in the free agent market that Sandy Alderson would go all in on, you would think it would have been a catcher and it would have been a center fielder. They were barely even remotely interested in Rio Muto. And Springer, they lost out for $25 million. But yet they were willing to give Bauer, who in his career is a mediocre pitcher, $40 $40 million, and he went all in to try to get him. So where, where do you think Sandy's mind is? He didn't want a center fielder in Springer and go the extra $25 million for a necessity on this team, which was a right-handed bat, which clearly we don't have enough of, and a center fielder, which we don't have. Nimmo is not a center fielder. Everybody's got to realize that. And if you want Dominic Smith in left field and Nimmo in center field, guys, That defense is going to hurt us during the season. I can guarantee you that. You can't have a really good dominant infield defensively and then go in the outfield and have guys with chickens with their heads cut off. Nimmo can't go back on a ball. He's pretty good going in on a ball, but he can't get balls over his head. He's very bad at tracking balls. It's Nimmo is not a center fielder. He is so much better in left field. And then you can tell me, well, what are you going to do with Smith? I understand that. But at the end of the day, Smith's got to be in a lineup. Peter Alonso's got to be in a lineup. I get that. But at the end of the day, we have enough. To, if Dominic Smith's not in this lineup, we have enough to score enough runs for this team and for this pitching staff. So what is a way to lower the runs that the opponent scores? Defense. Your pitches can feel more comfortable on the mound if you have really good defense. They, they don't mind putting the bat. Uh, pitching for a batter to hit the ball in play and get an out and use their defense as a strength. The Mets haven't had that in a long time. It seemed like the, the Mets pitchers has always been trying to strike out pitches and not p- make these players put the ball in play so the defense can screw, screw up. We see that all the time. So Sandy and his plan B options is exactly what Sandy Alderson does. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, guys. In 2015, we've seen the same thing. We saw what his plan A was, which was Justin Upton. What was his plan B? Jay Bruce. 
His plan C was Johannes Cespedes. That's who he got because there was no other option because Justin Upton and Jay Bruce came off the trade market. That's the issue. So Kyle Hendricks and Chris Bryant could be heating up again when it comes to the Mets because they lost out on Trevor Bauer. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, like this video. And if you like my videos, like my content, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, let's go Mets.